President Obama says he is tired of the gridlock, so he's going it alone. When Congress refuses to act, and as a result, hurts our economy and puts our people at risk, then I have an obligation as president to do what I can without them. So it is that stated goal as we look at live pictures of the White House now, along with this week's recess appointments and other extensions of his executive powers that have critics accusing him of acting like a monarch. And they point to his Chicago background as one inspiration for power politics. So the next person I'm going to talk to, you want to watch this interview because he calls it like it is. I asked longtime Chicago political writer John Cass, is the president acting like a monarch? He's not acting like a monarch. We don't have monarchs in Chicago. We have bosses. This is, <laughs> this is, we have political boss. You know this. Yeah. You were here. You know what Chicago, you know what politics is all about. This is the epicenter of politics, and that's here's where it's played. So that, and it's all about leverage. Uh, go ahead. It's all about leverage. But see, uh, th this is a criticism that he is playing Chicago-style politics. He's taken a chapter from the Mayor Daily book where he can do whatever he wants. So the three <laughs> appointments, he can do this, he can do that, and he doesn't really need to get anyone's approval. First of all, you know, I let's give the president some credit here. Uh, he doesn't. He shouldn't have to run his appointment list past Sally Quinn or some wash you know georgetown matron it really doesn't matter what they think he's from chicago he's going to put people around him that are his people that he trusts mm -hmm. so all that's nonsense right that that part of the criticism the myth of barack obama was and you know the difference between the man and the myth mm -hmm. the myth was sold by david axelrod mm -hmm. who is rich daly's mouthpiece mm -hmm. and he sold it to the media to the national media that Barack Obama was transcending politics as if he was floating in some plastic bubble across the United States with a wand like Glenda the Good Witch. You know, I'll transcend here, I'll transcend there. But reality, okay, reality is that he's from Chicago and we have bosses and they take control and yeah. they do what they want. Yeah. And that's the reality. You, and you that's not transcending politics, that is, that is playing politics. You know it better than anyone else because as you were talking about, I'm sure people say, oh, the guy's from Chicago. He's going to, you know, of course he's going to be in love with what the right, president his diff would have. And you are very critical of Mayor Daley. You're very critical of politicians. And you, as you have said here and in your columns, you're very critical of the president. And you call it like you see it. It's I, not listen, I like, I, I like President Obama personally, right? But I cannot, see, I wear in Chicago, a few of us, we wear the tinfoil hats. So when Dave, that they don't wear in the Washington Post and the New York Times, I don't think, they should get them. Because if you wear them, then when David Axelrod starts sending his, you know, his channeling, you can kind of keep your mind clear when you're writing your column. And basically, politics is politics no matter where it's played. In Chicago, it's kind of a little bit more, as you know, because you were here and you covered it. Yeah. It's a, there's a little bit more honesty to it in the sense that it's all about the money mm -hmm. and about the power. Yeah. And it's not about transcending, it's not about hope and change and all that nonsense. It's about breaking people to your will and getting what you want done. John Cass calls it like it is. Thank you very much. Uh, the president's spokesman, when asked about the monarch criticism, said the president wants to work with Congress, but that gridlock is not an excuse for inaction. Again, my thanks to John Cass for his insight. We hope to have him back again.